Welcome back for another Game Bug Review. Zorbs here, and I'm going to be reviewing Final Fantasy VII exclusive on the PlayStation 4, but I was playing it on the Pro. Now, this is the remake. Um, I guess you would call it part one. It doesn't actually say part one, but the story does not feel uh, fill the whole Final Fantasy VII uh, game from the original PS1. Uh, it only covers the Midgar section. So before we jump into that, this review is raw, it's unedited, I don't have talking points, it's all in my head, so hopefully I get everything out that I want to say. Uh, I just feel this way is better to get a, a, a more true reaction without me sort of, you know, going through the motions, trying to see the good and the bad evenly. I, I feel like this way I'm just going to get to the main talking points that stand out to me the most. Um, without time to reflect on other things, I think this is a, a more, uh, you know, intimate look into what I felt uh, when I played it. So let's start off with the story. Now, the story of the original Final Fantasy VII was massive, uh, and it was one of the big influences on the games to come in terms of storytelling in video games. Um, <clears throat> so when you're thinking of is it going to be a one-for-one -one direct port or is it going to be added content? They've basically taken the general story and they've added more. Now, people were like, oh, part one, you know, what is that going to be? Disc one? Is it only going to be, you know, 10, 20 hours? Let's just say it's, I spent about 32 hours on it. You could spend longer, you could spend quicker. I did take my time with it. Um, now, in that whole 32-hour story, not once did I feel that it wasn't a full game. So I never really played Final Fantasy VII start to finish. I only played up to probably Dis 2, to be honest. Um, and for whatever reason, I, I just didn't... It didn't click with me at the time. I love Sephiroth. He's my favorite villain of all time in video games. But I, it just didn't click back then. I was probably just a bit too young. I really got into Final Fantasy VIII. So for me, it was really cool coming into this because there were scenes that I remember for when I played it as a kid, but there was a lot of stuff that I didn't really know about. I sort of knew over the years the general story and how it sort of ended. Uh, so, you know, a bit of spoilers for myself, but I won't spoil anything here. But what I will say is the story is very engaging. Um, I wanted to know what was happening and I invested in some of these characters and when certain things happened, it actually had, you know, an impact. Um, and that's funny because a lot of the voice acting in it is quite comical, quite cheesy. It's very, you know, typical anime dubbed uh, voice acting. So I was surprised that I was invested despite some of the really cheesy one-liners and for whatever reason, they're always high-fiving and giving thumbs up in this game. And I, like, who the hell does that in real life? But despite all that, there are some characters that just have really good voice acting, like Sephiroth sounds amazing. Um, but, you know, people like Barrett and um, Aerith, they just sound comical. But despite that, that's the sign of a good story. If Even though those voices aren't the best, you can still be engaged and care for the characters. Now, yeah, what? not once did I think, oh, damn, this feels hollow, or this feels you know, just like an episode of a season, it felt like a full, complete story. Um, it felt almost like you were playing a first entry of a series of games. Um, like, there like it feels like the next part will be a sequel as opposed to it's just part of the first game. And that's really cool. Um, so, story-wise, I, I, I really enjoyed it. And I, I think that a lot of people will be surprised how fleshed out it is and how much more fleshed out it is without feeling like filler. And that's a big important thing is they didn't just, you know, rush some crappy, you know, extra bits of story that didn't need to be there. It all feels concise and it feels really well done. So let's move on to the graphics. And the graphics are the... Oh, I don't know how to... They're some of the best graphics and there's some of the worst graphics. So Final Fantasy VII always had these like little chubby characters walking around these CGI um, uh, pre-rendered backgrounds. So the backgrounds were 
basically static images, but they looked amazing. They looked, you know, almost 3D, um, and your characters looked pretty crappy. And then when you went into battle, your character was more of a fully adult-looking animated character. Now, in this, everything, you know, is fully 3D, of course, modern technology, but they still have those um, pre-rendered backgrounds, and damn, do they look spectacular. So the concept is basically there's the civilization, the slums that live, you know, on, I guess, ground floor of the city. And they have a giant structure that is covering over the city. Um, and up on that top tier is where all the rich people live and all that sort of stuff. So it's kind of like if you literally put a roof over the entire city of Sydney and then put all the rich people on top of that roof. That's how it works. So when you look up, you just see this big mechanical structures and, you know, crazy lighting off in the distance. And it just looks incredible. Now that's all good. But then when you go up to say a couple of rocks, um, or even look at the ground, it looks like a kid drew it with crayon. Some of the textures in this game are just downright PS2 graphics. They are terrible. A lot of the textures will load in and you'll just wait there for a good minute before it actually looks some so somewhat modern. But a lot of them just don't do anything. That's just how they are. And it's really, really disturbing that half of the game looks great and half just looks rushed as hell. And I, I just don't understand how the developers were looking at the visuals of some of these areas and going, yeah, this is good enough. Like, why would you put so much effort into some areas and then just half-ass the rest? Now, you know, they can't say, oh, because it's a big open world, because we've had games like The Witcher, Assassin's Creed, all those games do it a thousand times better in the visual department, and they're bigger games, and they're more open world, so no excuse. Um, so visually, the characters all look fantastic. That's great. NPCs, not so much. But who cares about that? But the characters and the lighting and even the effects, like particle effects and, you know, when you slash your sword, little sparks come off. Those sort of things look fantastic. But in terms of those, some of those environments, especially the outdoor ones, they look like complete trash. And that's the honest truth. Now, going into gameplay, gameplay for me is probably the, the biggest highlight because I'm so done with turn-based RPGs. I don't want to be just waiting my turn to attack and then waiting for them to attack and blah, blah, blah. And I get it. It's There's strategy involved, knowing what to do and when to do it. But I just prefer the action RPG. I prefer buffing my character and, and, and putting different items and weapons um, at the ready before I know I'm going into a battle and just hacking and slashing my way through and using magic. And, you know, there's there's strategy involved doing it that way too. But it's just more engaging, more fast paced and a lot more fun, to be honest. So I'm really happy with how the gameplay turned out. Probably my main critique of the great gameplay is I've never had a game stop the action so much than this game. So I'll be you'll be running through an area and then all of a sudden, oh, look, there's a ledge that I'm going to have to crawl under. And it does this really slow animation of cloud just crawling under some rubble. Or there's the other part where, oh, look, here's a little, little alleyway that's really tight. And I'm going to have to shimmy my body across to get through it. And you do this probably like four or five times every like half hour. It's, it's ridiculous how many times... The game goes from you running through an area only to stop, crouch under things, something slowly, run, 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 slowly shimmy through something, run, run, run. And it's just ridiculous. And I get that they're trying to do these little, you know, secret loadings. We all know what they're doing and it sucks because I don't know any other game that does this. So you've got the really high highs and then you've got the really low lows, but when you're not doing that, when you're in playing the stories, I mean, the side missions are pretty average at best, but the main story is really engaging. The combat's really fun. Um, some of the mini games are really fun. The motorbike parts are fun. Playing darts is kind of fun. You know, little things like that. Um, there's even like the dancing mini game and just little things that break it up. 
And I just, I, I don't understand how if you're going to separate a game like this because you think it's too big and you want to do it justice, then just take time, take a bit more time, put the effort into those visuals, get rid of this crazy crap loading business that's going on because there's no need to be ducking under rubble and taking that long constantly. It's just ridiculous. So let's move on to sound. Sound design, 10 out of 10. Like the music is fantastic. Uh, the sound effects are great. The atmosphere is, is just perfect. Every environment that you're in, it just sounds right. Um, the only part of the sound design that sucks is what I've mentioned previously, and that is the, um, the voice acting. Now, some characters sound good. Some characters show good emotion. Some are just over the top, cheesy, lame, um, but yet still endearing in a way. There's still some characters that you really feel for, even though you, you know, want to just set your ears on fire because they're just so grating on them. Um, so it, 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 it is so weird. It, it's, it's really a game of such high and lows, as I've said before, in every aspect. Now, normally we have our awesomeness section. There's like one defining feature that stands out about the game. Um, I think what, what stood out is, is how, is how they've taken something and cut it back and made the game smaller in terms of what the original was yet fleshed out a story enough that it never felt like it was just a single chunk of the game. Now, you know, that, that in itself is impressive to some degree, but I think, Getting a new group of people involved in a classic, but keeping it feel somewhat fresh, uh, fresh is um, is a feat in itself. I think that was really cool. Um, I like that after the game, you can go back and find the hidden collectibles. You can go back and skill up your characters. Um, there is incentive to go back and learn stuff. And I actually felt like I did want to go back and jump in and, and collect some of that stuff. Whereas a lot of people might just think, oh no, I'm done with that because it, it is quite a long game. So it's good that it has that. It's not just a linear story from start to finish. There is more reason to keep playing it despite the fact that it's not the entire first original Final Fantasy VII. So do I reckon that you would need to play the original? Not really to be honest. I think if you've never played the original, just jump into this because if you play the original, this is going to feel completely different in terms of gameplay. The story beats, the themes, and obviously the environments are going to have some similarities. But if you didn't have the nostalgia of playing it originally and then coming into it, I feel like the original is just going to be so slow paced and just, I don't know. It's hard because a lot of people will tell you it's one of the greatest games of all time, but that was because they were probably playing it when they were, you know, 10 or 12. Um, and that's the best the visuals were at the time. So, yeah, I don't think you need to play the original. Now, so as, overall, if I'm, if I'm coming to, to score it, it, it just, it's so hard. Because on story front, I think... It's fantastic. I think as a story, the game's probably a four and a half out of five. Like it, it's it's up there. It's a really good story, and I love the villains. I love you know just the the way the story builds and where it heads. In terms of graphics, though, this is the one where a lot of people I feel like are highlighting the highs and they're not really putting forward the lows. But the lows drag it down so much. So I would give it a three and a half out of five. If they all looked like they did, it would have easily been a five out of five, but they don't. So it's going to be three and a half out of five. Audio, audio wise, musically, it would have been a five out of five, but those crappy voice acting, mm, it's hard. I, I'm going to say a, a four out of five. Actually, let's go 4.5 because the music is so amazing. And I feel like the voice acting comes into the story side. So we'll, we'll give it a pass there, four and a half. Um, in terms of gameplay, again, 
I can't give it such a high score because there's so many things that are just slow and clunky. And another thing I forgot to mention is when you're just walking around, everything feels so stiff. So I'm going to have to give it a four out of five. I, I, I really enjoy the combat, but there's just things like climbing ladders, opening chests that feel so old school and not necessary in this day and age. Um, so four out of five for that. Now, awesomeness, I mean, it could be so much more than it is and it could have been, you know, really spot on in, in every department, but it's not, there is reason to go back, but you know, people are going to be depressed that it's not the whole game. So I'm probably going to have to say it's a, it's a four again for awesomeness. Um, so it's, it's a really good game and I, I recommend everyone play it. Um, but just don't go in expecting that it's like the greatest thing you'll ever play. It's, it does not have the same impact that the original did when the original came out. People won't be talking about this entry for years to come. They'll just say it was really good, but that's about it. So yeah, hope you guys, uh, enjoy this. Um, I've, probably let this go on way too long but it it deserves it because you know it is um a remake of of such a classic and i think a lot of people were glossing over a lot of the negatives or they would bring it up but they wouldn't really go into depth and a lot of times you know you have like resident evil 3 remake it had a bit of hitches in the frame rate and stuff like that and that's fine because it doesn't take away from the overall presentation the visuals still look amazing start to finish but something like this where you've, you're you wowed, like I've took screenshots where it looks absolutely incredible. And then I took screenshots of where it just looks literally like a PlayStation 2 game, if not worse. And that, dis that, that disparity between both, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't, it just looks like that it's half ass in some areas. Anyway, I'm blabbing on. So you guys get the point. So just go in there with an open mind, enjoy the story for what it is in the gameplay but just know that it's not going to be this grand game that's reinvented the wheel. All right, guys, stick around for more things on Gamebug and uh, hope you are all safe in isolation and, yeah, stay safe. Bye.